I'd like to call the meeting to order of the Measure G Citizens Oversight Committee. Um, first order is um, organization. The Measure G Citizen Oversight Committee background. Um, I'll turn that over to Damien. Thank you. Um, so in this item, it's a recap of some of the information we talked about last year, but it's been a little while since we discussed it last. And um, as you know, Measure G is, um, is titled the Katadi Essential Services Measure, which was approved by voters on June 3rd of 2014. And um, the uh, uh, I won't recap all the duties and responsibilities, but they're in the staff report. But I will just say that on December 13th, the City Council did accept the um, fiscal year audit for 1516, and you'll find um, in the Measure G report on uh, page 23, there's that there's a page in there that um, specifically discusses Measure G. But the full audit is also available online, and Norm can provide it to you too if you have any follow-up questions on that. And then, um, <clears throat> so last time the, um, the committee met, there was a discussion about um, the mayor and, uh, I'm sorry, the mayor and vice mayor being the chair, the appointments being the chair and vice chair. And um, following that format, uh, the new chair would be uh, Ken Savano, who is not available tonight and Yvonne would be the vice chair as um, the vice mayor Landman's appointment. So um, unless there's any questions on that, um, we, can, we can rotate and continue the meeting. Um, you don't necessarily have to. Um, and so I, I will also add that there's um, just as a reference guide again in the Brown, the uh, guide to the Brown Act is in there in case there's any questions on the meeting process. But um, so with that, um, I'm, unless there's any questions from the committee on this, on this particular item, um, that was it for me. And we can move to the next one. So, so we can move to the next item just to um, take public comment. Yep, close public comment and move to the regular agenda. Okay, so um, the first item in the regular agenda is the presentation on the fiscal year 15-16 strategic planning goals. And um, I think as you all recall, one of the comments that came out of our uh, meeting last year was, um, provide, was to provide some context for the committee when you um, consider the Measure G report. And um, so this year we included the strategic planning documents that the council um, discussed in the lead up to the 1516 budget. And so um, just to give you a little background how, how the council does their annual strategic planning process is we, we have a series of workshops, um, public workshops, where we, um, we talk about what some of the um, goals are for the goals and objectives are for the coming year. And um, if you go to the, um, this, go to the council packet and it's packet page 78 is the start of it. Um, it's a two-page, this, this first document is a two-page document, and these are the goals and objectives for the year 15-16. And so this is a, um, kind of an ongoing document, but a living document. Every year we start with the council and the workshops by uh, looking at these goals and objectives and seeing if they still are where the council wants to go um, and that this still matches their, um, their priorities, their goals and objectives. And um, the second step to the workshops is, is, uh, going, is then going through each department 
and um, prioritizing. There's prioritizing some of the additional project work. So there's, um, for each department, there's, now if you flip the page, this is an example, page 80 and 81. This is the police department. Um, it's pages 80 and 81 in the packet. Yeah. Uh, this is in the council packet. Or I'm sorry, it's the oversight committee packet. Your, your packet, I apologize. Oh no, it's it's not it's not in this document. Yeah, it's in. Yeah, sorry, it's in the. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I yeah I apologize. So the goals and objectives I I'd mentioned just previously are pages seventy eight and seventy nine, in the um, in the packet for the committee for the meeting tonight. And the pages, the page numbers you see that are on the bottom. So um, 78 and 79 are the goals and objectives for the committee. And then um, I was just going to run through some of the departments and how the council looks at these things. So uh, for the police department, for example, again, this is packet page 80 and 81. Um, the first part of this table is the day-to-day -day duties. So this is just kind of keeping the lights on, the things that we're always doing. Even, even the, in the absence of any sort of special projects, this is just what the department does in its course of normal operations. Um, and just the scope of its operation, that's just what it, what it's, what it does. And then the um, effective, there's a column there that says effective FTE. Um, FTE, in case you aren't familiar with that, is full-time equivalent employee. And so um, these percentages are how much time that task takes relative to the other things on the table. So for example, if you look at, um, there's a line there that says receive and dispatch both emergency and routine calls for service. The effective FTE is basically four people. Um, so it, you know, it takes four people basically full time to be doing that function. And then um, at the bottom, the subtotal day to day, you have 18.76. That's how many, um, how many people it takes to do that to do all that, all those duties. And um, regional representation, those are, um, it's kind of unavoidable. Again, it's almost like a day-to-day -day duty, but it's, you know, if you are, if you work for a city, you have to go to meetings because you're part of regional things. Um, and a lot of times they're not even really optional regional things, you're just part of them because you're, because you exist, right? So um, an example might be like our dispatch, um, our dispatch and report writing system, we're part of a, we're part of a regional program. And um, it, it goes back to the, um, the poly class days when the police agencies and the emergency agencies weren't able to effectively communicate with each other. And um, as a result of that, they all kind of went together and now we're all, for the most part, communicating on the same platform. So that anything that, um, for example, our police department, if we um, arrest someone and we enter that into our system, every agency um, that's on the system in the county has a, a access to that same information instantaneously. So um, there's, there's a lot of things like that that we just are always involved in from a regional perspective. And then finally, the last piece is the projects piece, and that's, I guess, what you'd call the discretionary piece. And in this case, for police, there was a 911 upgrade project that happened, and we were planning to do in 1516. Um, emergency response plan update and emergency operations center training, that's EOC training, and then enhanced continuing the uh, traffic safety for motorists and pedestrians, and then implementing an anti-theft program. Um, at that time, there was, um, there was kind of a minor rash of, of uh, auto, not, not the theft of cars, but breaking the cars and stealing like laptops off um, chairs and or seats and stuff like that. Some bikes disappeared off people's front porches. So generally things that weren't locked, so it wasn't major crime, but just things went missing. And um, so these were the things that, that, um, that were high priorities in the lead up to 1516 for the council, and they ended up on this project list. So really this, the discretionary part is kind of the project piece, and that's where the council spends most of their time talking about 
with the time that we have, with the people that we have? What do we want to spend our time on? Um, and when we go through strategic planning, I should point out that um, this, is, this, this is before the budgeting process. So we make an attempt, you know, through the effective FTE to make sure that we think we have the staff to cover these kind of things that we're talking about. But we don't necessarily know um, to a high level of detail if the money will be there to do it. So um, the strategic planning exercise really is about what are, um, what are our priorities based on the staffing resources that we have? And that being, that, that being the first constraint. And, um, and then the second step after we get through this strategic planning process is the actual budget creation. And then when you actually put the dollars to everything that you're trying to do, you inevitably find things that just, you just can't afford, right? There's just something that there's no money for. So, um, so there's a, there's, there is a subsequent discussion during the budget process where we talk to council about um, all the projects we talked about in strategic planning. And we say, okay, we had these, you know, 40 projects planned um, in strategic planning. And, you know, it turns out when we can do 35 of them because we just don't have money for five of them. And so that, that's kind of how it sort of falls out in the process. Um, since we're on police with respect to, um, and I know Norm, I don't want to steal Norm's thunder, he'll get into that in a little bit, but um, with respect to police, so um, Measure G has a significant operational component for, for public safety. And so the day-to-day -day stuff, the regional representation, a lot of that stuff is all, I mean, Measure G kind of makes all that possible because it enables our staffing to be able to do these things. So even though Measure G doesn't pay for it entirely, you know, it's, it, it enables us to do that. And in the, in the report itself, it's, um, the, you know, it says something to the effect that it enables us to continue operations and be viable because of the, um, you know, the funding we need. And, in, in, you know, police and safety, we don't have a fire. We don't have a fire department at the city because we're part of the fire district. But um, public safety everywhere is um, it's a general fund endeavor. So um, unlike some of our other functions, like if we do wa you know, water delivery or wastewater treatment, all those things are um, like those things are funded through you know um, water bills, and sewer you know the sewer part of the bill. Um, but there's administrative things, and there's safety, and there's you know um, you know a lot of the park work, road work, um, building maintenance work. A lot of that is general fund. So when I say general fund, I mean, you know, um, primarily sales tax and property tax, and that's what general. That, that's what Measure G helps um, augment that piece of our budget. So we have the other pieces, primarily enterprise, so water and sewer systems, that are funded separately, and they're not a Measure G thing. Um, and then, so uh, real quickly. I will just kind of go through the other departments in case, unless there's questions. So please feel free to stop me at any point if you have any questions. I just spent a little more time on police so you understood kind of what, how this all works. And then, um, so finance is the same basic layout, the day-to-day -day duties, um, regional representation, and then the project list. And then in this case, you'll see um, uh, the red bar. The red bar is basically kind of where you run out of staff time. Um, if there's a horizontal red bar across the page. Yeah, so, so, so you, you look at the effective FTEs and you, you kind of, you're adding them all up. And, and this, these projects are all the projects that we all kind of wanted to do. And we'd love to do them this year if we could. But it turns out that if you add it all up, you know, that, you know, in this case, um, we would need, you know, four point, if you look at the bottom where it says total with projects, 4.58 FTE, but it turns out we only have four people. Um, it's just it's just a little bit overly ambitious. So that red line, that red horizontal line, is the cutoff where we think. Yeah. Right. Right. So that, that and that's part of the discussion we have with council. You know. So here's here's our staffing resources, and here's. Here's the things um, at a staff from a staff perspective that we think um, we need to get done this next year, and then the council.
provides their own list of stuff that they think need to get done, and then the council, um, the council tells us how to prioritize it. You know, we think this is more important than that, so move that down below the red line and move this above it. And, and so that's, that's the exercise we go through in the, in the workshops as we're doing this. And then the, um, I, I neglected to say on the other column under objectives where it has a, nu has a number and then a letter next to it, that relates back to, um, no, this is the packet for the meeting tonight, pages 78 and 79. There's um, goals and objectives. So if you look at the goals and objectives on pages 78 and 79, and um, it ties back to the... Yeah, so it's also on our report thing. Yeah, it's, yeah. Right, so it's, it's just a way to have the discussion um, with the council and with the public that are there at the meetings to describe how, you know, how each one of these things fits into the overall picture. Um, and then again, with community development, it's the same, which is the next page on, on this packet, page 83. It's the same concept, day-to-day -day duties, regional representation, and then um, the projects, and then the, the red line that kind of cuts off. And so you have the process, and then a red line, and then page 85 has additional process. So you have quite a few projects you want to do for community development? Um, yeah, so yeah, page 83 would be the community development. And then page, yeah, page 84 and 85 are kind of run on city manager's list. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this will, um, and if, I mean, if you want, I can kind of pick out, pick out the projects that, that were kind of covered this year. Because um, inevitably, what ha you know, like, so the first step of this planning process is we, we develop these, and then the budgeting process, you'll have a couple things fall out just because there's not financial resources for it. And then um, inevitably through the year, there's other things that just happen that are un unanticipated. Like, um, you know, so I can just use this, this year as a good example where the, um, the state, you know, passed some new laws that we didn't anticipate at that time because they weren't on anyone's radar um, as being that eminent. So like you know, the state just passed an accessory dwelling unit, like a second unit law, which changes things for us. And now we need to go into our ordinances and update stuff. Um, Proposition 64, which is the um, recreational marijuana thing. So that's a whole another process that wasn't necessarily on our radar screen. So things like that can happen. Um, inevitably they do happen to some degree. And then, um, and then finally the last one, this is packet pages 86 and 87, is engineering and public works. And this is, um, this is probably the stuff that would be the most visible, you know, to the, to the public, because they tend to be building things that people see, as opposed to other departments that are, um, that are implementing process improvements or, you know, things to, um, things that might be a little bit more under the hood that you wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be as apparent to the, to the normal person that's not paying attention, <laughs> you know. But these ones you can't you can you can't miss it because, like a lane's blocked and you're trying to get somewhere and it makes you upset, right? So you, you remember it. Um, hopefully not too upset though. So um, anyway, this last one is public works, and um, and that's so that's I mean that's the basic. Um, that's the basic concept, unless, uh, unless the committee has any specific questions on this process or what the projects were. And we, we will talk a little bit more about the projects when we get to the report itself. But, if, you know, if there's anything now, please let us know.
Yeah, we found we found we had to. Um, I mean, it's it's um, the best method we've come up with for estimating our ability to do things. Because um, years ago, we used to always shoot for the moon, and then you're all constantly disappointed. You know, it's like oh, you know, we didn't get it done. We thought we could do it, but it turns out it takes 20 people to do this when we have 10. You know. <laughs> So, so this this is just a way I think for ourselves and also um, you know for the public and the council to sort of get it at least in the right ballpark of capacity you know for for work. It's yeah, it's definitely helped. It's definitely helped minimize the surprises because um, it at a staff level it forces us really to think. I mean, strategic planning and this in particular really forces us to think um, kind of in detail about what's coming up and really kind of think through what we might run into in the next year. And so um, just by that exercise, you're less likely to run into things that you didn't, the, the kind of unexpected things are much less just by the nature of that. And then um, it also is a helpful communication tool because um, I think a lot of, you know, for um, a lot of people like the public that might attend these um, workshops, they may, if like for public works or police, they might have a pretty good idea of what they do every day. But for, you know, um, like I'll use myself as an example, city manager's office. Most people are like, what in the hell do they, excuse the language, what do they do, you know? Other than like he's the boss or whatever, but what do they actually do, you know? Other than walk around with their coffee cup and, you know. Um, so this is, it, it kind of lays it all out in terms of, you know, kind of the main tasks that are going on and how much time that takes. And, um, and just so before we, um, if, if the uh, committee doesn't have any comment, I would just um, suggest that we open it to public comment real quick if there is any, as a matter of process. Yeah. Right, and just, uh, just as a matter of process, just ask for public, even though there's no public here, I would just ask for public comment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks. All right, so um, Norm is going to give a presentation on this, and then we'll be answering questions after. Yes, uh, good evening. Norm Velosa, Director of Admin Services. So um, tonight we're going to be presenting to you uh, a report on the revenues and uses of Measure G for fiscal year 15-16. What we have presented to the committee is, a, a, I would say, is an awesome report that you all have. Uh, and uh, this is a, a report that we put together that we believe is a, 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 a great way to communicate to the public on uh, the uses and the revenues of, of Measure G. For tonight, we're going to go over a couple of things. And uh, first of that is uh, uh, we're going to go over a summary of the Measure G followed by uh, a review of the Measure G funds received, uh, as well as the essential city program uses of Measure G funding, which includes public safety, street, sidewalk, and storm drain, park and landscape, public building, and recreation. And after that, we're going to go over the auditory evaluation. To start off, I wanted to say, just to give you a summary of the Measure G, that the purpose of Measure G is to provide funding for essential city services. This was a voter approved 1% sales tax, and it was approved on June 2014 and enacted October 1st, 2014. This replaced Measure A, which expired in 2015, and Measure G has a life of nine years, which will expire in 2023. I would like to uh, put focus on the breakdown of the Katadi sales tax, and actually there is a part of that in the report that was published. It was on page eight of the report, which shows you more of a detail of the Katadi sales tax breakdown. Um, out of the, in fiscal year 15-16, the total sales tax rate in Katadi was 9.25, and it's broken down as follows. 
7.5 of that is the total statewide sales and use tax, and uh, which includes uh, a 6.25 state uh, sales tax, 0.25% uh, of the county transportation funds, and 1% of that 7.5 is the local sales tax, which is the Bradley Burns 1% sales tax. Added to the 7.5 to come up with a 9.25 are two uh, additional taxes. One is a county tax, which is equates to about 0.75%. This covers the SMART, the Measure M, and the open space. And lastly, the 1% Cotati Measure G. I just wanted to point out that the 1% uh, local Bradley Burns tax that is part of the 7.5 is also being received by the city as part of the sales tax. Please do. No, it, it is incorporated as part of the total sales tax and it is a general fund, yes. Um, just a recap of the Measure G funds received. We have uh, put together a comparative of the fiscal year 15, 16, and the fiscal year 14 and 15. In fiscal year 14 and 15, um, we received a total of $1.3 million of sales tax. And that's approximately about $149,000 a month. Uh, let it be noted that the reason for a difference between 15 and 16 is because the uh, Measure G was um, um, in, uh, incorporated or um, it was approved and enacted in October 1st, 2014. So it's only part of fiscal year 14 and 15 that we received Measure G. So uh, it's about nine months out of the 12 months. In fiscal year 15, 16, the, to uh, the city received a Measure G of 1.9 million. That equates to about 164 thousand dollars a month um, as you can see in the in, 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 in the uh, uh, graph here it's 14 15 1.34 fiscal year 15 16 we receive about 1.97 the yellow graph in there shows the budget year 16 17 we were being very conservative and uh, estimating what we are to be receiving for 15, 16, 17, so we uh, shows uh, an amount uh, comparative to what we receive in 15, 16, which is 2 million. This is again a practice that we follow, which is a fiscally responsible conservative management of the city revenue resources. Another graph shows you what we had used the measure G4 in 15, 16, the brown portion of that represents operations and maintenance, and the light gray represents improvement projects and equipment. Um, if you look at fiscal year 14 and 15, comparing that to 15, 16, it's pretty much close. It's about 60, 61%, and that also equates to a, a pretty close uh, use for improvement projects and equipment for both fiscal year 15 and fiscal year 16. Um, the next graph shows you a percentage of the program, so the, the measure chief funds used by program. Um, in 1415, um, public safety program uh, covered about 41.6% of the total measure G, and 36.7 of that went to the street, sidewalk, and storm drain. 8.8% of that went to park and landscape program, and 12.8 uh, went to the public building program. The difference in 14 and 15, I wanted to bring you to, uh, I believe it looks closely uh, uh, in comparison to the 14-15, the only program that was added in 15-16 is the recreation program. Um, uh, and that equates about 1.6% of the total measure G in 15-16. I would pause for any questions on 
Sure. In um, 1516, um, the city operates and maintains several public buildings. And uh, the costs associated to that are the, uh, the ongoing operational cost of maintaining those buildings, as well as the maintenance and repairs to keep the building up par and, and also uh, to make sure that uh, you know, all the operational maintenance needs of the buildings are well kept. Yeah, uh, you know, I'll also add in the prior year in 1415, we had um, the train depot construction. <clears throat> and um, that was a, it started out as a $1.6 million federal grant, and it went to 1.8, I think, at the end of federal money. But we had a matching requirement, and so we were able to leverage Measure G money to complete that project. That's another example. Moving on, I wanted to go over some of the essential city program uses for each program. And uh, this will just be a summary of, of what we have accomplished or what we have put in for the use of Measure G. Specifically in public safety, in fiscal year 1516, we spent about 685633 uh, to cover the city. Uh, the first one is the city continued to fund ongoing operations to preserve our local police department. And also, the city replaced emergency power backup systems for the 9 11 emergency dispatch. For the street, sidewalk, and storm drain uh, in fiscal year 15 16, um, we have used 855,352 of Measure G money. And this Measure G funded ongoing and improved services such as improved traffic signal and roadway landscape maintenance. Measure G also enabled the city to leverage a $250,000 federal grant to repave old Redwood Highway between La Plaza Park and Page Tree. And uh, as well as a begin construction of the downtown revitalization program project to improve the appearance of the city's primary entrance, including key safety improvements, pedestrian side plazas, sidewalks, streets, trees, lights, and street furnishings. This local funding enabled the city to leverage a 1.1 federal grant. So just for the street and sidewalk and storm drain, if you combine the, uh, uh, the old Redwood Highway federal grant and the, uh, the downtown specific plan of 1.1, we receive about 1.35 million uh, federal grant money. And, and that's, uh, uh, due to the uh, Measure G monies that are available to uh, fund portions of those uh, projects. Yeah, the, the project continues on to 1617. So, um, so there's two projects. The one that's between La Plaza Park and Page Street, that one is, is basically done. Um, you won't see anything really significantly different there. Um, the other one, the, the uh, downtown revitalization project, which is the one from Highway one, on Old Ribbon Highway from 116 down to La Plaza Park by um, Arches Glass or Miller Driving School in that area. <clears throat> um, that one is largely complete, but then the weather kind of got in the way and we weren't able to finish it yet. Um, because some of the stuff is weather dependent. Um, like for, for example, um, the bus shelters will be installed and they're going to be installed next Monday. Um, so we have bus shelters going in, we have benches and some trash cans associated with that. Um, I, I don't know if you've noticed, but on the sidewalk, on one side in front of Walgreens and on the other side in front of the, um, the vacant property kind of near downtown auto, there's, a, there's been this like traffic, this orange traffic cone sitting there on the sidewalk. It looks like someone just left it there, and it's actually covering up a piece of conduit, a piece of plastic pipe that's sticking up out of the out of the concrete, which is the electrical connection for the bus shelter. So, um, there, <laughs> that'll be happening shortly, as long as as well as some street furnishings. Um, the the these pedestrian plazas that you see in the picture there, um, those walls will be finished. They they need to be stuccoed on the backside, so they it looks gray, and that's just the base coat. 
So they're going to put like a you know more earth, earth tone um, stucco coat, so that it's not gray on one side and tiled on the other. Um, and I think, and also, uh, they need to put the benches in there. So there's seat, seat wall benches in there as well that haven't been installed yet. And then there's some other like minor things. Oh, and another, another kind of more noticeable thing you might see is um, some of the striping. So they've done some of the basic white striping, but they haven't finished it yet. So they need to um, put striping next to those um, asphalt impression crosswalks, you know, so they have like, like brick, they look like brick crosswalks. So there's white um, striping on the, on the, you know, to border it on both sides, which hasn't gone in yet because it's been too cold or rainy or whatever. Um, and also the bike lane around 116 is all going to be filled in with that green um, coating, you know. So like you've seen probably in some other cities in busy intersections where they paint it all green. So that's still not going to happen anytime soon. <laughs> anytime the weather lets us get out there and do it. So there's, there, there are some, still some things and some other parts of stuff that needs to be done out there. But the bulk of it's done. Yeah. So, Thanks. Thank you. So moving along, uh, the next program is the park and landscape. In uh, fiscal year 15-16, we had allocated or used 161,271, and uh, as we all know, in 14-15, the city council doubled the level of maintenance at our parks and continued this ongoing park and landscape maintenance at all parks within the city, and it continued on for fiscal year 1516. Um, and part of the cause is the hiring of the full-time maintenance worker to support the ongoing maintenance and park improvement uh, efforts, uh, as well as uh, the, it funded design efforts for the improvement of the Veranda Folletti Ranch, allowing the project to go into construction. This is followed by another program. It's a public building program. And in fiscal year 15, 16, we used uh, 213,642 Measure G money. And this funded ongoing building operational costs as well as maintenance and repairs of building equipments. The last program we have is the fund program. It's the recreation program. Um, uh, in fiscal year 15-16, we spent about 50487 This includes the, uh, the hiring of the full-time recreation and facilities coordinator in December 2015, um, and also funded services and supplies needed to start up and rapidly grow the recreation program and fund ongoing operations. Um, I just wanted to point out as well that uh, regarding the auditor's evaluation of the city's financial statements, Measure G revenues and uses were subject to audit, which concluded in October 2016 and was issued to council in December 2016. Statement of Measure G revenues and uses that is shown on page 57 of the city of Katati basic financial statements for the fiscal year ending June 30, 2016. A copy of that is actually shown on page 20, uh, page 23 of your report. And I just want to share with the oversight committee that the city received an unqualified opinion from our independent auditor this opinion without reservation states that the auditor feels that the city of Katati followed all accounting rules appropriately and that the financial reports are an accurate representation of the city's financial condition. The audit was conducted in accordance with the government auditing standards and based on the audit, the city's financial statements present fairly in all material respects in accordance with the accounting principles generally accepted in the United States. 
In closing, I just wanted to mention that Measure G is a great resource for the city's general fund. Um, whatever we collect in Measure G stays here in Katari. It stays local. This funding is ours to spend to maintain essential services for our community. That concludes our presentation, and uh, we're open for any questions. Thank you. Okay. Um, the hold on a second. Bear with me one second. Um, so, with the, with respect to the Measure G report, um, the committee is receiving the report and. Um, and just uh, providing comment to the chair, or I guess the vice chair in this case, um, about uh, about what um, comments, if any, they want to provide to the council with respect to the Measure G report. And um, there is, you know, I think kind of like last year, it was just a format that we came up with last year. On the very last page of the packet for the meeting tonight is a, is a sample letter. And so you can take a look at that. Um, if there's anything in there that you wanted to um, expand on, you know, now would be the time to. This is, um, this is packet page 122. It's the last page, the very last page of the packet, yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Um, great. Well, then, if if that is the case, then I can um, prepare it for uh, Ken's signature, and we'll get in touch with him. Yeah. I believe it's the last agendized item. Uh, yeah. So we would just. Uh, you took public comment already? There was no public comment, so. Yeah, so then we just, that's adjournment then. We just call adjournment. We adjourn the meeting. All but approved. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much.